Thank you. Okay. Good morning. Thank you for joining us this morning. We're going to have a discussion about uh, the pre-Reformation and the title of our topic is A Quest for Reformation and a Passion for Missions. And we will cover the period from the late uh, 14th century to the mid uh, 18th century. And we'll begin our lesson by looking at a man from the Midlands of England, John Wycliffe. Wycliffe was called the morning star of the Protestant Reformation. He was one of the first to officially challenge and call for reform of the Roman Catholic Church. Wycliffe was born in 1330 and he died in 1384, 100 years exactly before the birth of Martin Luther. He entered Oxford as a teenager. He studied theology and philosophy. He was an ordained minister, a priest. He served the English crown as a diplomat. King Richard was receptive to Wycliffe's ideas concerning taxes that were required by the Roman Catholic Church to be sent to Rome. And Wycliffe wanted those eliminated and he wanted those dollars, those pounds sterlings to remain in England. And the king agreed. In one of the first publications, Wycliffe took on papal authority. He wrote that he found no biblical warrant for the office of Pope. He wrote that the office conflicts with scripture. He said that the Pope had no authority on the English crown or nobility. And he saw no reason for England to be obligated to support a corrupt church. He called for translation of the Latin Bible into English, and this particularly caught the attention of Rome. According to Roman law, translation of the Bible into a vulgar or a common language was a heresy and punishable by death. Wycliffe concluded that it was for power and control over the people that Rome did not want the Bible translated into any other language. Nevertheless, Wycliffe and his colleagues committed to translation of the Bible into English, and this was done 70 years before the printing press. Thus, Bibles were printed by, 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 by Wycliffe and his colleagues, and they distributed Bibles to the, to the pastors, and they moved all through England giving people the Bible for the first time in the English language. Wycliffe followers grew in number. They were disparaged and they were given a pejorative name, Lollards, which means mumblers. The Lollards formed congregations across England and across the English Channel into Western Europe. In later years, Wycliffe fell from favor of the British crown, and he was declared a heretic by Rome. He retired to a small church in Lutterworth in the Midlands, and he died in 1384 and was buried in the church's cemetery. And, but this would not be his final resting place, resting place of his bones. At the church conference in Constant Ger Germany in 1415, Wycliffe's bones were exhumed, burned, and his ashes were thrown into the River Swift. John Wycliffe, the morning star of the Protestant Reformation, shined brightly against a dim horizon, signaling a day that will come that will be much brighter. And more daylight would, daylight would be seen with the coming of John Huss and more even with Martin Luther. We will now turn to John Hus, or John Husenek, often called the goose. Husenek in the Czech language is translated into English as the goose. Sometimes he was referred to in, in that manner. Hus was born in 1369 in Bohemia, Czechia, now the Czech Republic. 
Huss was a, was a Catholic priest and scholar at the University of Prague. He pastored a local church in the Prague area, the Bethlehem Chapel. He advocated reform within the Catholic Church, similar to that of the Catholic Consularis movement that was occurring at the same time. He had no intentions of forming a new congregation or a new church. He wanted restoration of the church to his earlier Christian life. He wanted the clergy to be restored to his highest ideas to serve the people. Bohemians were quite familiar with the teachings of Wycliffe. Low large assemblies were established in Germany and Cheshire. And students from Bohemia studied at, in England at Oxford and other universities. And students uh, also from, uh, from uh, Prague uh, attended uh, their, attended University of Prague and, and Prague students attended uh, uh, oh, get, get off, off track here. That'd be, but students from Bohemia studied at, in England, and England students attended the University of Prague. That's what I'm trying to say. Also, there were close ties at the highest levels between Chestia and England. King Richard II of England was married to the Bohemian Princess Anne and was also the daughter of the Holy Roman Emperor. The University of Prague's faculty was composed of Czech and German professors, and the German professors there were loyal to the Catholic Church, and they opposed the teachings of Huss. So many of them left and formed a new, new, new university in eastern Germany, the University of Leipzig. In his reformist efforts, Huss also had paintings and cartoons characters of the church. In, in his church in Bethlehem, he had a painting showing the Pope riding a horse while Jesus walked barefoot. There was another painting that showed the Pope having his feet kissed while Jesus washed the feet of his disciples. Huss's principal attack against the Pope was the selling of indulgences, that is the buying of forgiveness for sins. The Pope was encouraging the sale of indulgences in order to finance a war he had going on in Naples, and Huss found this despicable. At core, Huss challenged the authority of the, of the papacy itself, and very, very much like Wycliffe, he taught that final authority of the church did not rest with the church in Rome, but with scripture. In 1410, Huss was summoned to Rome to defend his teachings, and he refused to go. In 1411, he was excommunicated for disobedience. And later in 1414, he was asked to come to the church council at Constance. And Constance is in the southwestern Germany near the Swiss border. He was asked to come and defend his teachings and was given given a safe passage, safe conduct to come there, and his travel would not be interrupted, or he would not be kidnapped or any sort of thing. And so that was guaranteed by the Roman Emperor Sigismund, and Huss agreed to go. Huss arrived at Constance on November the 3rd, 1414. He was put on the witness stand he was not asked to re defend his teaching, but rather he was asked to recant. He was demanded to recant, and he refused. He was placed under house arrest at Constance. He was later moved to confinement at the castle of the Bishop of Constance on the Rhine River at Gottlieben was the name of the castle, and there he remained for 73 days in total confinement. He was in chains, and he fell into very poor health. On June 5th, 1415, he was tried again, asked to recant. He refused. The emperor became involved. Emperor Sigismund asked him to recant and to ask for mercy. He responded, show me from the Bible where I have erred, then I will recant. July 6th, 1415, 
His priestly garments were taken from him. A paper hat was put on his head, and the words on the hat read, leader of a heretical movement. He was taken to the stakes. He knelt, spread his hands, and prayed aloud. Jesus Christ, it is for thee that I endure this cruel death. I pray thee, have mercy upon my enemies. As the flames arose, he was heard reciting the Psalms as he died. His fellow countryman, Bohemian colleague, Jerome of Prague was also joined him at Constance. He was also put to death. Huss's ashes were later thrown into Ryan River as a measure to prevent the, the, the veneration of his remains. As mentioned, this was the same as done to the ashes of John Wycliffe back in England. Now we turn to the followers of John Huss, the Hussites. They were later called the Moravians. Hussites experienced persecution in their communities and enclaves in, on the continent in the 15th and 16th century. And in 1722, uh, the Hussites in Bohemia was offered refuge, a place to reside in peace by a wealthy German nobleman named Count Nicholas Zinzendorf. Zinzendorf was a Lutheran pastor and a diplomat, a diplomat to Denmark. Zinzendorf was dev a devoted believer, having been greatly influenced by his Christian grandmother. At a conference in Denmark, Zinzendorf heard missionaries report on their work among the es Eskimos. And then he met a former African slave from the Danish West Indies. From these encounters, Zinzendorf developed a passion for missions. He returned home to the Hussite community, which was called Herrenhus. Herrenhut means the Lord's watch. He became the leader of the community at Heron Hut. They organized under the name Unitas Fratrum, or United Brethren Church. The United Brethren Church grew. They established a missions ministry that sent missionary groups to the Indies, to, the, to Central America, to Africa, and then to North America. The London Missionary Society modeled itself after the, the Moravians. In America, in 1740, the Moravians established their northern branch of the church at Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. In 1753, they formed the southern branch of the church in Salem, North Carolina, today Winston-Salem, North Carolina. In both Bethlehem and Salem, the Moravians had missions to indigenous people in America. In conclusion, John Wycliffe, the morning star of the Protestant Reformation, John Huss, Count Zinzendorf, and the Moravians all embraced and sought to reflect the light of Christ that had come into the world. They took to heart the words of our Lord as he said, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, even until the end of the age. We give thanks to our Lord for these disciples who sought reform in the church and had a passion to take the gospels to the far corners of the world. Praise be to God. Amen.